Uh, Kyle, Megan, and Corey. Derek, last Callaway. name. What is it? Callaway. Uh, next student's name? Connor Frost. Kyle Guess. Okay. Megan Hendricks. And Corey Shaw. All right, so we're already there. Just to introduce our topic, um, over the last three decades or so, um, with the advent of medicine, um, leading causes of disease has actually shifted more to lifestyle. So because we now have medicine, we've got vaccinations, um, we've got um, antibiotics, things like that. It is now those lifestyle risks that uh, now affect us the most. And right now, the number one cause of lifestyle disease is cardiovascular disease. So the risk factors for cardiovascular disease are typically your high levels of LDLs, levels of HDL, being physically inactive, um, your diet, um, so we alluded to high chance of cancer in that. That can also improve in our biochemistry class we talked about um, how excess of sugar can contribute to that as well. Um, your liver can convert to your fat. Um, hypertension and smoking, those are the things that will increase the risk of decrease And so our paper, our topic, focuses on the LDL risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And so it's just to explain a little bit of the science behind LDLs and why they're so bad, why they're considered bad cholesterol. Um, LDLs, after they pick up cholesterol in the bloodstream, are typically ingested by macrophages, which have been um, absorbed by the intima layer of our arteries. Um, once these LDLCs are ingested by macrophages, um, they're converted to a, an oxidized form, which is bad. It's kind of induces an inflammatory response, which leads to the macrophages kind of turning into foam cells. And this builds and builds and, and leads to what we know as uh, atherosclerosis. And um, if the plaque that builds up on top of atherosclerosis, or the plaque that's there, worse, then we know that heart attack, um, stroke, and other things can result. So, that's why LDLs are bad. That's why we're trying to control it. So this table here, uh, there's a few different categories of um, LDLs, such as buoyancy and particle size. And we've, we've chosen to strictly focus on the concentration of LDLs. And this table here is from the American Heart Association. and shows that less than 100 milligrams per deciliter are classified as desirable levels of HDL. 100 to 129 is near optimal to, op to above optimal. Uh, 130 to 159 is borderline high. 160 to 189 is high risk, and 190 and above is very high risk for cardiovascular disease. So the topic that we're going to mainly be talking to you about is the effects of long-term um, exercise on LDL levels. And our main claim is that exercise alone has little to no um, effects on long-term. Uh, to demonstrate this, we're going to evaluate the significant exercise parameters that include mode, intensity, frequency, duration, um, and we're also going to well, we're also going to consider different populations um, that are influenced by these, so and their responses to exercise. All right, so we covered a couple different types of modes, um, and so we range anywhere from very very light exercise, um, and I'll kind of get into detail more on that one, but up to very intense and just different types of exercise. And so in our study, 10 of our studies um, on the exercise only focused on aerobic. Um, that was the main thing that uh, it seemed like researchers had studied. And then we also had a couple, um, yoga and resistance. And this is a chart that we actually compiled from our own data that we were able to gather just to kind of compare different modes to see if you know resistance made more of an impact or aerobic made more of an impact. And as a pretty solid rule of thumb, there was really no difference uh, significantly until we got down here to this outdoor walking and jogging. And with this, it's actually a little bit higher level that we started with, so the pre-values were much higher. However, um, in this particular instance, um, what do we have on here? It's still, your risk level was not dropped. So that first chart that we showed, kind of colorful on here a few moments ago, 
it didn't actually drop you if you were high risk, you were still high risk, even including the exercise. <coughs> yeah, so, if I know, a lot of the research that we've done were no longer than, we kind of set a standard for nearing the long term, so five months is kind of our minimum mark. We wanted to get studies that were greater than five months to see if they had an effect long term. So a lot of our resistance studies were, were under that mark. So just taking take that into consideration. But this specific study was a study that was five months long. Um, there was two, two different groups, a control and an exercise group. So the, the exercise group, they exercised two times a week of and again, they were at this diabetic population, so they're probably at a high risk population. Um, so the results were that there was a decrease, statistically significant decrease. Um, but again, look at their baseline values. Optimal values are 100. So they are at your high risk, moderately high risk range. And we had a 14 some of the things that, that we noticed um, in the study is that 50% of the subjects were on a specified diet. So as we as we'll talk about later, we can talk about how slightly or how the diet may affect the results of potentially this study. But I also found studies under the five months that we didn't include, and they kind of had that mixed result. So maybe maybe it could be that typically bodybuilders or people who exercise in that form, their goal is to lose weight. So maybe that, that could be a parameter that would affect um, the results. Okay, as for intensity, um, based off of all the studies that we use in our analysis, um, we define moderately intense exercise as anywhere between 40 to 75% of heart rate max. Vigorous was defined as anything above 75%. Uh, so six of our studies had uh, employed moderate intense exercise, four were vigorous, and this is again just looking solely at exercise programs, um, no diet added in, no medication added in, anything like that. So this is just intensity. So this was a notable study that we did that. Um, is this that same study you just mentioned? This was one that was included. Okay. That okay. was kind of an overall project. So this is one that we included that was notable for um, showing the significant increase and showing that exercise really doesn't affect or indicating that type of blood gas is not on the level of need. So this, pop, or this study included a population of 259 subjects, both men and women, that were sedentary. Um, they participated in exercises such as walking, jogging, um, stationary bike, and treadmill. This was a two-year long um, trial and the consultations and intensity are higher and lower. There um, were two categories of higher, both group-based and home-based. Um, the higher, they participated in 60 minutes of exercise, three days a week, at 73% to 88% of their heart rate max, where the lower participated in 30 minutes, five days a week, at 60 to 70% of their heart rate max. And here we can see that their baseline started at a moderately high level. Um, there was a significant drop, but since they did start at this higher level, it wasn't statistically significant in this exercise. Um, and these are just the changes overall. <coughs> so they went down 13? Is that what it's saying? Yeah, so they went down at a negative 13 just for this, so this is the men. Mm -hmm. They went down, so statistically it was a p-value of 0 0.05, and so they just didn't go down enough for a healthy change, basically. So this study <coughs> has similar parameters to the one that we just looked at. Um, there's 49 men, and there's four different groups based on heart rate max. There's a control group, uh, 65, 75, and 85 percent of heart rate max exercise group. And in our claim, we noted that um, exercise has little to no effect on um, the lowering of the LDL, le LDL level, but here we find that um, in the 75% group there is a significant change. Um, this one right here, um, 159 it goes to 142.7, and um, but if we reference back to this chart that we looked at at the beginning of the presentation, 
we see that that is still in the borderline high-ish category. And so the authors on the study um, gave some suggestions as to why that only that category was significant. And a couple reasons they mentioned were the diet fluctuations and also um, the body composition changes. Those weren't controlled in the study. And so that is one reason why they said that, um, that that's the reason they gave why that would be significant versus all these other categories. And um, just so we, so we can tell that based off these studies, like exercise, the intensity, you know, plays a little bit of a role. It's, it's that little to no part of our claim, but it doesn't, it doesn't really do anything as far as, you know, the risk factors for CBD. Um, we're still in the borderline high category here as we were on the previous study that we looked at. All right, so to kind of round things out with this, we also wanted to study the duration and frequency to see, you know, obviously intensity wasn't one that mattered um, and mode wasn't one that mattered. But with the duration and frequency, um, the exercise training programs, we made sure that they had a baseline at least 20 weeks long to be considered long term. That's just shy of six months. Um, a lot of our studies that we initially started looking at were under 12 weeks, and we had to toss them out um, just to, to try to keep consistent with what we're trying to study here. Um, the duration also, they started at 11 minutes and went up to two hours. And we'll kind of tie in between um, how the duration and frequency also tied in with um, intensity and if any of those combinations matter. Um, and then most of the training programs also, um, you know, 30 to 60 minutes. And I believe we had, I think we had six of these where the frequency was one to five days a week and the, it was between 30 and 60 minutes. And so general, generally accepted, I guess, um, health guidelines as far as exercise is what a lot of them follow. So that was for consistency. So this study here um, was, was kind of interesting because it showed the, the effects, the results of increasing frequency. And so we start here, and in this study there was 295 men and 355 women. Um, they started at a, uh, an intensity of 55% of VO2 max, and over the range of five months, they increased to 75% of VO2 max. Um, they did three sessions per week, and they started at 30 minutes, and over the duration of the five months, they increased to 50 minutes per session. This chart here, group A is the changes in men, and group B is the changes in women. And as you can see, the scale on this chart is really is really small, 0.1 to 0.2. Um, and down here, same thing. It's just it's on a very small scale, and so you can see how little effect that this this in, um, frequency and duration had on this study. So the values are listed here. Men and women, they had um, similar baseline values, and as you can see, the change in men and women was almost identical. And this chart, I mean, reflects that also. And it just shows that um, it, the frequency really doesn't matter um, as, as far as with the goal to decrease our LDL levels. Um, and this chart, yeah, I mean, it just summarizes how, how men and women were the same and how that effect was very minimal. I mean, 1.16 milligrams per deciliter was very small when you're looking at levels of 117 and 120. All right. So the last um, kind of parameter that we're going to look at with exercise are, are different populations. Um, we wanted to dedicate a separate section to this because we did find, as, as some of us have already mentioned, that differing populations um, did cause a little bit of variability in the effects of exercise on long-term LDLs. And so um, some of the different populations that were included in our studies were obviously men and women, average and overweight individuals, um, those with high baseline LDL values and some with low on LDL values, and uh, those with varying degrees of cardiovascular disease risk factors. So, so in summary, with the populations, most of the studies um, that we had saw no significant decreases in their LDLs, except for typically high-risk populations. And this is one, one study um, that was dealing with patients who had myocardial infarction. So recently, within the past few months, we gathered just had a heart attack, um, and three months later they started gathering data on their planning and exercise training program results. So they had two groups, a control group um, and an exercise group. Their intensity was very vigorous. It was 11 minutes of exercise per day at very high intensity, 
or X-Red program was with the Canadian Air Force, 5GX plan. So basically what they did is they stretched for a minute, they did sit-ups for a minute, back to 10 push-ups, and then they ran at high intensity for 60 minutes. So, again, the duration of the thing is like 6 months and 11, 11 years. And did you say that they modified their diets? saw here is that among the control group, no change for the look, the values are pretty much almost as high as you can get before you get that very, very high risk. And so we want to see in these kind of populations a drastic decrease. And if you don't see a drastic decrease, you're you're still usually negative five points. Among the exercise group, they dropped about thirteen milligrams. So once they secrete, they're still at that high risk range. Something else needs to occur for them to get out of that range, or else they're still going to maintain a high risk of getting another major heart attack. And so, again, generally, among the populations at lower risk, we saw no significant decrease, but this was significant, but they're still at high risk. And so, that's just something to consider. Exercise may affect it among these high populations, but not enough to really get them where they want to be. So to just kind of summarize overall, um, we've shown that factors such as mode, intensity, exercise, or duration, frequency, and population just have little to no effect on endo levels um, through all of these different things that we've shown. Um, overall, nothing really decreases the levels. That's just focusing on exercise. Right, and so uh, we asked the question then, why should we exercise? We're trying to decrease our our CBD risk factors, you know, why would we even bother? And what we found is that exercise in and of itself doesn't cause a significant decrease in LDLs, typically. Um, but when exercise is combined with effective dieting, it causes significant weight loss, that not only does cause a significant decrease in LDLs, but um, there's a compounding effect between these two methods. Um, and so, uh, it's not just that you have an additive decrease between diet and, and exercise, but there's actually an exponential decrease um, when compared. There's an exponential decrease with those two combined when compared to either one by themselves. So nine of our studies that we looked at used a combination of diet and exercise that resulted in a long-term decrease in LDL levels, and we're going to highlight a couple of those <laughs> most important studies. Okay, so this is where it kind of started getting exciting for us, is we finally started to see, you know, we came at this, we want to see if exercise can. We had all these results that said, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't, and then we started to catch on to this whole diet and exercise. And so two of the studies um, that actually led up to this is by Krista Verity and her team on two separate studies, um, 2005 to 2011. Um, they actually started supplementing different um, plant-based substances. So they substituted plant sterols in place of a lot of different fats to try to just switch things up and see if it was cholesterol. Um, along with that study, they also started to exercise them um, just at the four miles an hour um, for 30 minutes a day. And they did see a little bit of a change in them. Um, and then in the other study, they actually started to change and lower caloric uh, intake. So we had caloric reduction, they lowered triglycerides, and they exercised them as well. And so this is a study by Stefanik and their team, and this really had a, kind of the, summed up everything. And so the three LDL values that they started with, they started very high, so they're very high risk. Men were 125 to 210 milligrams per deciliter, so almost double what a healthy range is for the men, and then 125 to 190 for the women. Um, their exercise protocol was 10 miles weekly, um, and that could be divvied up really whenever, but they said they suggested a five day a week, so roughly two miles a day, walking briskly at four miles per hour or greater, or jogging. And what they found, and uh, the diet, sorry, that they used was called the NCEP two-step, um, and I'll kind of show you exactly what that is on the next slide, but you cut your total fat down to less than 30%, saturated fat less than 7%, and then cholesterol they wanted less than 200 milligrams. And so this was the result, so HDL, don't worry about this one. Um, the LDL, so this was the control group here in white. And we saw the control group kind of fluctuated with really nothing. Here's the exercise group. The women had a little bit of an increase. 
the, the men actually went up. Um, they had a negative effect by just exercising, which we've proven before. However, when they did diet, they found better results in both the men and women. But here's where we thought it was the most interesting. If you take this graph and stick it down here, there's a higher or a higher compounding effect than if you were to just take this and add it to this alone. The men was very, very large in comparison. And so we did see that exercise and diet did have a great effect on this. And if we were to recommend that to someone, um, this is this is the protocol we've measured. So okay. And so here is just that NCEP2 diet. Um, just a quick overall um, view of this. We're just going to focus on caloric intake and cholesterol intake. And so we had the exercise group there. Actually, they went up a little higher. And I assume where they didn't tell them to control for diet, the exercise more, you're going to have a little bit more hunger. So I imagine that's why this one went up. They didn't exactly expressly say why. But the diet group, they cut them by nearly 300 calories. And the diet plus exercise group, they cut them by nearly 170 calories. And then when we had the cholesterol intake, we had 100 milligrams uh, a day depletion in their cholesterol intake. So that was the NCEP2 diet that they followed to put in, um, I guess, side by side with that exercise program. Yeah, so this table also goes along with that same, same study. It's a table that we created ourselves. Um, but just to, before I start explaining this table, I think something that we noticed is that to reduce your LDLs, it's not just a, you gotta do one thing. It's a complete lifestyle change, with both your diet and exercise. Um, so it's encouraging overall greater health through multiple factors. So this right here, along, I, I studied multiple studies that was just calorie restriction or diet alone, and they did see Consistent results where they decrease their LDL. So I'm like, okay, what is it about the diet I, or the diet alone that's, that's still allowing them to decrease their LDLs? And what I found is a lot of them were calorie restrictions. Um, there was a study that was done over the popular or time period of about six years on average, three to fifteen years, of just calorie restriction alone. And they were they weren't even at high risk. They were at 120. They were wanting to reach their goal of 100. They found that they they decreased their values to below 100. So, with the diet and exercise combined, maybe it was more weight loss that had an effect. And that's kind of what I wanted to emphasize here is how um, weight loss increased among each group. So the men control of, of that study that Derek had, there was no no weight loss in the control group, very little decrease. Um, with the exercise again. Hardly any weight loss, but very little decrease. But as you add a diet, there is even more weight loss with a greater decrease in LDLs. And again, when you combine diet plus exercise, um, you had an even greater reduction in weight, um, 10 pounds, and they had the, again, most significant decrease um, so with diet plus exercise. So is it necessary the exercise alone? Well, maybe exercise can have an so I wanted to, I did a follow-up study, maybe that more emphasized strictly on weight loss, but what were the means of their weight loss? So this study right here, there's 48 men and women with uh, above average BMI. Um, and this study was over a period of 12 months. And their diet or their exercise was, was monitored very closely um, throughout that period of 12 months. Um, they were divided into three groups, a healthy lifestyle, pretty much in the control group. Maybe just start eating healthier foods. Don't, don't reduce your calories, but maybe replace your trans saturated fats with your unsaturated fats. Um, and they're pretty close values. There was actually an increase in the LDLs just by a healthy lifestyle. No, no weight loss, no additional exercise, um, but just your average is healthy lifestyle. But when you, when you increase the exercise energy expenditure 20% um, to reduce weight loss, they had weight loss occurred. Um, this is their weight loss decreased 14 pounds. With exercise alone, they didn't change their diet, um, but they increased their exercise to a point where they induced weight loss. 
among that population, they decrease from 121 to 104. So they're almost at the optimal range, 100 or lower in the optimal range. Um, and with calorie reduction restriction, um, they had an 18 pound decrease in their weight. And they also saw 131 to 111. So almost 20, or about 20, That's kind of what we, we learned is that exercise can be good, and that's why that diet plus exercise is effective, because it leads to greater weight loss. So, um, as we mentioned a couple times now, our, our topic was to focus on long-term effects of exercise on LDL, and, and so then we started discovering the diet, um, how that has an effect on our LDL levels, and so we were kind of wondering, okay, well, what else works? And so just as a side note, we found that um, medication is, is used, often used as a means of lowering LDL. And medications such as statins, colpicellum, hydrochloride, REGN727, and atorvastin. And these, level, um, these medicines um, significantly decrease our LDLs, but they, all, they do it pretty drastically also, which is what this next slide is going to go into. So just to give you a background, this is a study that we did, but um, it's got a lot of chemical background to it, so just to go over that with you. Um, this study is associated with the need to function in the kitchen. Um, it's a chemical in the body, um, provider known as PCSK9. So what this does is it's a post transitional regulator of um, LDL receptor activity. And it's, it's synthesized in the liver where it um, enters into the bloodstream and then binds um, with LDL receptors. And so then it targets them for degradation. And with that, they, we see a, um, or this process, we see a reduction in um, the capacity of the liver to um, bind and remove those LDLs. So this causes an increase in LDL levels. So this study um, was shown with subjects who had uh, been diagnosed with hypercholesterolemia. Um, it was a population of 40 subjects. Um, and what they did is they um, gave them doses, single or multiple. Um, these doses increased um, by 50, um, depending on the group, um, 50 milligrams of this chemical right here, RG, RG, uh, GN 767. So um, what happened is over time, they noticed um, significant drop. So at their baseline level here, we can see um, they started off you know, moderately high here, and then after 57 days on this medication, we see drastic levels. So these aren't um, the differences, these are their new levels. So in the highest um, dose which here we can see that they went from 140.2 to 65. So it's a really, really intense decrease. So once again, you don't really want to do medication. Um, really high cases and of like really sedentary and how obese populations where this is going to you know turn into something that you're causing the problem of the heart attack for sure. Right. So um, in conclusion um, our studies have shown that exercise in and of itself has little to no effect on long-term LDL levels um, even with increasing intensities duration of frequency um, but exercise coupled with effective diet does cause uh, long-term LDL levels to drop and um, weight loss is, is the most critical factor in this process. And therefore, our, our recommendations um, for reducing LDLs is that you effectively diet and exercise. And we found that moderate to um, really a range of intensities for exercise work with this. Um, as we saw in Kyle's study, even when they were just briskly walking, um, coupled with a diet that reduced their calories significantly, um, somewhere in the range of 170 to 360 calories a day, um, and they did experience a, a very significant reduction in LDLs. And if um, you have, uh, besides diet and exercise, if you are in a, a very high risk category, then you should consult a physician 
um, about possible recommendations to to write the book. So that's it. Any, any questions before I get into mine? So it's like typical um, CBD or spectrum type things. So being sedentary, smoking, um, a diet high in saturated fats. When you guys studies, did they ever list like strength versus aerobic, you know, ones combined with diet? <clears throat> and if there's a difference between them. You guys uh, brought up about how <clears throat> when you first talked about how diet and exercise goes together, and you were showing the difference between the control exercise and diet and exercise combined. Um, you said there was a difference between men and women simply just exercising, how the women went down and the men went up. Um, what do you guys think was the reason behind that? Uh, typically, men and women actually have different baseline values. Okay. Um, and so I believe the women, um, I want to say the women's were just a little bit higher, um, from what I remember studying in this. And so when they had these different decreases, they just had different values to, to start with. So ending might not have been as drastic, but the love is still So they, they were randomly placed in the blue corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other questions? All right. So you guys kept saying that exercise did nothing, right? I kept saying that it didn't significant. It yeah. didn't significantly alter? Most of the time. Most of the time? Except That's in higher, higher, except in higher populations. In, most higher populations. in higher populations, explain higher that. Risk risk. Population. Okay, higher risk. Okay, so people with high, higher levels it saw significant reductions. <laughs> yeah, but they're still in, they didn't decrease it to the point where they wanted to. So yeah, you can still make a small. What's, the what's drastic, small? The most drastic we saw was moving basically from here to here. You didn't have any like from here to here or I didn't. I didn't see a single study that they were above 190. Um, the one that we just I just showed there, they went up to up to 210 to 190. Yeah, but that, we're talking oh, average. Okay, fair enough. And I guess I didn't die. So, and the women, all, women, none of them technically were above 190. So, go back to your thing where you said. So, the stuff you saw where the biggest differences were from where to where. So basically, from here, I had that one study with the heart test. They were at 138. <laughs> Same. So they went from 178 to 163. 
What percent reduction is that? <coughs> hmm? What is it? One from one what? Well, if I take 163 and pay tithing on that, so about 8%, yeah, 7%, okay. So a 7% reduction. Now go to your one that showed it with diet as well. Diet and, yeah, right there. What were the percent reductions in the diet alone? No, right there, that shows it. So in some of the studies, the exercise was better than the diet? In the very high, very high, uh, the very high percentage. Yeah, the very high So I'll ask the question again. Did exercise make a significant difference? So go to your conclusions. Be where what's my point? That would be really important, super super important. Because actually you had really good data, everything was good, but then you're you kept saying exercise doesn't do anything. Well, actually, it does. It does a significant change. It does. In some of them, go back to your previous slides now. Let's just go through, study this study real quick. Very beginning. Okay, go slide, 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 slide. Okay, so this is good. This talked about the general stuff. You know what I mean? I, okay, so one thing I, I'd like to see the references on each. Of the, you know what I mean? Just so that way, if somebody just had the PowerPoint, they'd know what the study was. So they did some stuff. And they said, how much of a decrease? Fourteen percent. If I gave everyone a fourteen percent grade boost, would that be significant? Not significant? Okay. So we said, and they started at one fifty. That's not the above 160, so that's even the next group down, right? And they saw, so what's 14% of 150? Yeah. However, this one, keep in mind, they did not control. So they didn't control diet on this one, right? So it was, this one is a tough one to measure in. Okay, so the next slide. So another go back. Oh, sorry. So, okay, so that, okay, next. So this one. What was the change on it? And these were, again, that 150s group. And this probably, I'm just guessing, this is a very common number to see with people with cholesterol problems is 150s, 160s. I, I don't know, because we keep seeing it pop up a lot. Did they have changes? Did Was there any difference between high intensity and low intensity? I, and that... So somewhere in there, put no difference between intensity in the slide. Because if I'm just looking through this slide or this and going, what were the results? Right? And even more so, you go, well, okay, so the high intensity, uh, okay, high intensity group base saw 23%. Was that one not significantly different than the women? And then did they reduce their LDL significantly? Because the statement on this that was said was there wasn't a significant reduction. And I'm going, I, I'd be hard for me to believe that a 23% wasn't significant. A, or Sorry, 20, a value of 23, which is even greater than 23%. A 13 of 157 is what percent? You know, 7, 8%. Were, the, were those numbers significant? Yes, they are across the board. In this because, study? In this study, yes, I would say. You would say? In, or you're sure? In this one in particular, yes, that is significant. You say, you'd know for sure that p-value was less than 0.05? It was nine. Okay, so that... Did you make this chart, or did you pull it from the... Um, I pulled it. So this was a percentage chart, and there was a lot more... Got it. Because they should have then stars. That's what I was looking for. Is I look stars next to the significant ones. So if it wasn't significant, I would like to know that. If it was significant, I would like to know that. Because just because we see the mean change 
was 23.98. If it has huge standard deviation, so you have this bell curve, and then you have another bell curve that there's 50% overlap, it might look like the means are really different, but if the standard deviations are massive, there's overlap. So I can't tell whether, I look, just the eyeball effect, I go, wow, that's, that's big. I mean a 10, 12% reduction, okay? So then you go to the next slide. And this one made sense. I don't, again, I was baffled. I, I would be shocked if this was randomly placed because 127, 140, 150, 160, it seemed like the higher, they placed them in high intensities and stuff. But uh, that's a, how long was this one, duration-wise? Uh, at least nine months, I believe. Um, I don't have that right here. But okay. So here was one, and I would go, well, what was the difference here? Why, why did this one not change? Go to the next slide. Nope, next one. This one, okay, we go, okay. So this one was your frequency thing. Did they vary? Did they go from 55% to 75% during the study? Yeah. So how can we compare whether frequency made a difference? Well, so we just did the, the frequency also increased from 30 to 50 minutes, and that was kind of what we were kind of building in on. That'd be duration. Frequency. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was still three times a week. Okay. So, so frequency didn't change on this one. But... Exercise did nothing for which group? What level were they? They were, I mean, what, they, were slightly over. they were slightly over. So slightly overs saw how much change? 1%. Plus or minus, right? Okay, next slide. Uh, so 1... So this is the heart attack group. This is the heart attack group. So... What did the exercise do to these guys? Was it significant? Yeah. Positive. Yeah, it was under the significant factor. So it went from 176 to 163. That's 13 milligrams per deciliter. Okay. So again, we're at that 170. Okay, next slide. Next slide. So I exercise. So this one, okay, this is self-explanatory. This is a combination one. Next slide. That tells the same stuff. Next slide. Same thing. This That was cool. Okay. And then this one. If This is a group that was in the 120s. Barely 120. And what did it exercise? A 20% increase in exercise or 20% in... Energy expenditure. So they took their energy expenditure of a day and they had to do 20% of that in exercise? Okay. How many calories do people usually burn a day? Huh? 3,400? Yeah. So, okay, and I'd be curious, was that resting energy expenditure, total energy expenditure? Because if it was resting, resting might be 2,000. Daily be 3,500 or 3,400. That's a guy usually, but still. So 20% could be that they had them do 700 calories of exercise. How long did they exercise for? No, but uh, like during the daily bouts. It was just as long as they reached their 20%. Because if it's, if hard, it's hard 20% hard. And the, of the total daily and you're saying 700 calories, how long does it take for a sedentary person, person to burn 700 calories? At least two hours. So this might not be realistic, but... And again, this would be focused more on the weight loss aspect. Yeah. Like there's actually a chemical change in the body that would have lowered LDL yeah, so, but my point is, is how can we compare this? We had other studies that were in the 110s one, that showed 1% 1 or 120. It was a 1% reduction, but yet this one went how far? They dropped their values by 16. They dropped their values just as much as the people who did, like, it were in the 170s. So what was so special about these guys? Had no weight loss. And then the ones who just did caloric restriction, they reduced and they were similar. So diet. So I guess, I guess my point is, is could you say that, oh, if you exercise, you could see this. What was the difference? Well, these guys were, I think their exercise was a, a really high amount. Say, so next slide. Next slide. So this tells us 
how much we could expect to see a reduction if we are dealing with what? Medication. Next slides. Where's my comparisons? I want conclusions that are numbers, not statements, because I'm not going to believe you. I want to see studies have shown that exercise alone does not does not shows no significant changes in long-term LDL. I think we just showed that that's not correct. We need to say that if you're in this group, what percent change could you see? If you're in this group, what percent change could you see? If you're in this group, what percent change would you see? Because technically, it did show significance. In, in certain groups, exercise coupled with ex effect, uh, exercise coupled with effective diet does lower. How much more? I want to be able to compare those. And then finally, what does medication do? So, because what if I'm the type of person who says, "Hey, I want to be a healthy person. I'm going to start eating right. I want to do all this stuff, and I don't want to go on drugs. Medication. I don't want to go on medication." Is that realistic? What values could I see change? How much could I change? You tell me. Up to 20 would be the most realistic aspect. We got about 20 milligrams per deciliter. About 20 milligrams per deciliter. So did you ever see someone go from 160 to below 100? In what duration of time? What's the longest study you looked at? So calories with an exercise one. Two years, maybe? So you could say uh, in, in a two-year lifestyle change, you can see roughly this this percent under these parameters. I mean, show us the uh, – so don't tell us – I mean, you could say studies have shown that exercise is significant, and I still wouldn't have believed you. I just said, show me the numbers. You could say it causes a reduction of this value. Fantastic. And let us determine. And then the next one was uh, – um, what about when it's balanced? And then finally, with medication. So if I do medication, so, I mean, medication took it from what levels? Go back to the medication ones. 140. So the highest medication one you showed was 140s, but yet the exercise ones were how high? 150s, 160s, 170s. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, that was that's a major change right there. But again, if I didn't want to, if I wanted to do it as a lifestyle thing, how far down could I get it? That's what your conclusion should have. It should show these, these differences here. Why does medication do such a better job? So this is just to stress you guys, really. Um, I, so if I change my diet, if I eat right, and I exercise, where's my LDL coming from then? If I still have high LDLs. Twenty-five percent of your diet of your uh, LDL cholesterol is typically from diet. Seventy-five percent is what the liver decides to make. So it would make sense if I change my diet and exercise, I can usually impact about approximately what percent? Seventy-five percent would be whatever the liver decides. That's where it gets complicated because then you can't change it that much. Well, you maybe you can change the buoyancy, the part of your size. So, so I'm going to ask you the question again. If someone has a uh, cholesterol level of about, about 120, will exercise reduce their LDL? Explain it. Give me all the different uh, factors that would Im be involved. Uh, caloric restriction, um, depletion of or uh, reduction in cholesterol intake, reduction in triglyceride intake, saturated fat. Basically, want to try to cut as much of that. I mean, what we consider this is all done in the sciences. What's going to add to overall cholesterol and fat? Cut that out, manage, uh, exercise. How severely cut it out? Um, 
Could you could you just say, hey, you guys need to eat healthy? You need to read. Yeah. We'll go back to your study, previous studies. Keep going. Right there. Beep, beep. <laughs> People who are told, please eat a health, have a healthy lifestyle and eat right, what happened to them? So, what does it really take? It takes weight loss, severe weight loss, yeah. with an exercise. Was good too, but caloric restriction. <laughs> so, you. So. Now all of a sudden you mix and go, well, these two, three-year studies that saw a, you know, a 20, uh, um, 20 milligram reduction, did their weight loss plateau? I don't think we looked at any studies that actually showed the, uh, the long, long, what happened with weight. Because if someone goes, hey, you know, their, their, their ideal weight's 180, they're 260, and they drop down to 220, and they don't drop any lower than that, would that could that possibly explain it? I, I, I don't know. That's what I'm saying here. So, so it's pretty apparent that that medication is critical for people who naturally produce high amounts. I'm just curious, how much can I change it if I don't want to do medication, and if I'm in what category? That's what was glaringly missing. Although the data you did present was very good, I just I was like, ah, you have it all there, but you didn't tell me what your your slides seemed to present. Any other questions that you guys came up with? from this. It's always tough being the first group. And I waited accordingly. So, um, Good job. Very good job. So, a few things. I will give... Uh, I, I sent out emails um, to different teachers, different students, different classes, different professionals in the area about coming to the presentations. But there's a lot of people who obviously can't come to the presentations. Um, and so I will give a up to 3% increase on your final...